So, hello everybody. Welcome to Division One Theory. This is the fourth interview that I've done, and I am with, unfortunately, I might butcher your name, but Yuri Bichika. Yeah, all right. Uh, yeah, play, say it for me. Yuri Bezica. Bezica, okay. <laughs> Thanks, man. <laughs> uh, a buddy of mine, a new friend of mine that I met when I was with my wife on vacation in Slovenia. I went down to Ljubljana to um, check out their practice, and he was nice enough to take us out for a uh, uh, grab a drink before practice and, and show us the practice. So, welcome to the show. Um, why don't you tell us a little bit about your kind of background, your journey with football, because you've been playing for quite a long time. Yes, sir. Well, uh, first of all, I'm very happy and honored to be at this show, like this interview. Uh, hey, I'm glad like, to have you, man. It was great meeting you, you and your wife, when you came came down. Uh, I know that a lot of players were happy that you came because, uh, like, especially the quarterbacks, they didn't want to hear me yelling at them too much. So it was nice for a quarterback. Yeah, they, got, they look pretty good, too. I mean, you guys had a well-structured practice, and it was one of those situations where you guys, I think, had a vague, Asian week or something was going on we had like three bye weeks in a row which is like the worst thing the worst especially in Europe you know like it's not the school related or whatever so you cannot force the guys to come to practice but still you want to have as much practice as you want you know like as you yeah, can get so okay, so how did you so how did you get started with football? How old were you? Uh, what are you doing with a with a Raven shirt on? Give me some updates here. Represent, baby. <laughs> uh, like I started playing football when I was about fifteen. I okay. kind of bumped into it through a friend that I met during summer break. Uh, he was already playing. Uh, after that. Uh, I wasn't the biggest guy for football, you know, I was kind of skinny back in the day. Uh, and uh, I played for a year here, and then I had the, uh, the opportunity to go to an under-17 under uh, team in Austria, where there, I really felt like I was a part of the team, because everyone was the same age, we were growing up together, basically, you know, it, it was like a high school football team. And the coaches were great. Uh, I picked up a lot of stuff in Austria. I stayed uh, so after the under 17, I stayed for the under 19, and eventually for the men's AFL team of the Corinthian Black Lions. Yep. Uh, it was great just the experience being in Austria. Austria is really great football wise from what I've seen, and I've been there for like eight years. And it was great. After we won our championship in 2012, I got a couple of offers and decided to go to Kirchdorf, uh, the Kirchdorf Wildcats. They were in the GFL 2 South at that time. It was 2013. Uh, it was the guys were great. Uh, all the players were great. Like we, we all had fun together and stuff like that. Just management wise, there were some stuff that wasn't held held to the promises, you know. After so when that, you were I, playing in, when you when you were playing, let me just stop you real quick. So when you were playing in Kirchdorf, so geographically, this is located about an hour north of Salzburg. Did you stay there during the week, or were you driving back and forth? No, 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 no. Um, I, I, uh, I wouldn't drive for nine hours a day, you know. Like it's a completely yeah, for every week. I mean, you would stay there on, over the weekends and for the season, right? It, if I would if I would uh, live in Salzburg, I would do it. But living in Ljubljana, you know, it it would it would be a five hour ride just to get to practice, and yeah, yeah. You, you could do it. So I lived up there. We lived in a house. Me, a Canadian guy, and a quarterback from California. Uh, nice, nice setup. Oh my. I, I almost forgot the biggest dude. Like, how could I even forget about him? There was a lineman from Sweden as well. So it was okay. fun, you know, changing a lot. Of, a lot. Of, I just said hi to my high school teacher. I just saw her. Yeah, no problem. Um, so uh, then I went back, and it was basically a good thing that I went back because when I came back, I wanted – I really started – I wanted to do a lot of things for youth football in Slovenia. 
because until then there was no youth programs. You know, it was just the man's team, which it's hard to keep people playing at, after a certain age because you have to have your money, you have to have a life, you got family responsibilities, you know. So what is the, I mean, when you first started, I mean, what is the football situation in Slovenia? I mean, there was only when you started one team, correct, in Ljubljana? I can tell you this. The first game I played, yeah. I was 15, almost 16, and we went up against guys that were 26, 27. So you just got to think about the physical attributes that, like, a grown, at, a grown man has a, a high school player, basically. So right. after that, I moved to the under-17 in Austria. It was, like, totally different story. Like, you, yeah, you were yeah. able to to tackle somebody without, you know, it, it was great. Like, and I wanted, at, at, when I came back, I really wanted young people, young players to develop against uh, their own age class, you know. Yeah. Which still, if you look at our our season this year, we came to the semifinals against the Znoimo Knights. They're a great team. They're well oiled, like they really know how to play with each other. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. you can see that they've been together for a long time. And our team is you saw our team, like it's young guys, guys that are seventeen. Yeah, yeah. Now, how many guys? How many guys do you have on your team? Right now? Yeah. I'd rather not say, man. But <laughs> okay. 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 It's, uh, it's, a, it's a work. It's a work. It's a work in progress. Yeah, but I I can tell you this much: I have great expectations for this year, and I know I have a lot of young guys that are willing to put into work. Uh, a lot of guys from this year that joined the team that really feel like this is a team. So we got this team atmosphere really going for everybody, which, you know, you need that for people to actually come to practice. And basically, I'm not a win right now type of coach. I want to develop. I want them to, you know, have a future in this or not if – because let's be honest, not a lot of Europeans come – not even a lot of college players come to the NFL, right? Right. And I just want my players to let let football open some doors for them, you know? Maybe change yeah, their Yeah, definitely, pers- definitely. So, yeah, and I think that's a good mentality, especially because, again, if you're struggling with either with numbers, you don't have that many guys, or you're struggling with – I mean, in Slovenia, the situation with football is difficult. I mean, there's really not many teams <laughs> – and there's two teams basically now for yeah. tackle. So you have the Maribor Generals. They, uh, but I don't know their situation right now. I know a lot of older players will are calling it quits just because you know you have to have a job, yeah, stuff like that. Um, and even in uh, with us with the Dumjala Tigers, you see that the Ljubljana Silverhawks joined us. Even the Alp Devils, they joined us because we had – it was basically a make it or break a year this year. Yeah. Uh, and the Tigers were really sit- situated in the best position because the Tigers uh, – I, I will pat myself on the back real quick. What do you do? Uh, so, to, to, I patted myself on the back because I'm going to tell you something because – that's I'm going to pat myself on the back. It's going through the video to you. All right. I got you. All right. What do you got? Uh, we have, uh, when I returned from Germany, we started, this was ba- basically our first youth team was the Dumjala Tigers. Yeah. And uh, we, we really w- didn't want a man's team at all. Like, we wanted to be, like, the youth stable for the Ljubljana Silverhawks. I let Ljubljana figure out, you know. But after that, sure. everybody wanted to do juniors, uh, junior teams. Like for four or five years, we a lot of us guys were talking to them, like, "Hey, we need youth, you know. We got to open it up." It fell on deaf ears, so we started it on our own terms. After that, everybody wanted a slice of it. I, I don't know how to yeah, say it. Of course. 
Yeah. It's a bit of a Slovenian mentality issue, like hard to admit, but I know it's the same because I have a my brother, my older brother is a basketball coach, and okay. it's the same in basketball is the same in soccer. You know, like it's basically the same story. And you know, you, you got it from Germany. Soccer is way way more Popular. interesting and populated than American yeah. football. Yeah, it definitely is. Although I must say, in Germany, I'm very impressed with the uh, with the development of the sport, and I, I know that that's a thing for you, you know, in Slovenia to to try to build it. So it's really it's really a cool thing, and it was fun coming by practice and, and seeing you guys and meeting your dog as well. Is is Nala? Uh, is she around? Give her a quick uh, quick shout out. Hey, hey, there. Hey, hey, Nala. <laughs> yeah. We're Great. At- Right now, go down. No, no. yeah, that's my so, assistant. She calls the plays. Yeah. <laughs> she calls the plays. Yeah, yeah. So, next question for you, and um, I think this is probably a similar situation. And again, it sounds negative, but it's all over Europe with with American football is attendance issues at practice, right? Getting everybody to come to practice because they're either students or they're working. Or maybe they're unfortunately not working, or they have a, a family event, or their you know their wife can only take vacation for this certain amount of time, so they have to leave on vacation. There's all these issues that make it very very difficult in Europe to get everybody in practice and get everybody to the game. So how do you deal with that situation? Uh, and I'm looking for tips with this question. All right, like I, I'm gonna just go off me, like what I think, what I was given by American coaches, American players, that I get the chance and the privilege to work and play with, and they all, we all stumbled about, upon the same thing. Like you have in football, especially European football, you cannot expect 24, 26 year old guys. Like, I know a lot of them that are, that are always accountable. They're always at practice. I'm not trying to take away nothing from them. But European football was a problem because you only had man's teams. And when you're 25, you're 26, you're already out of college, you're looking for a job, or you are already doing a, like, I don't know, like a practicum or whatever you call it. Yeah, exactly. Like an uh, internship. Yeah, internship. Yeah, my bad. So you cannot really expect it from them, you know. But uh, for me personally, uh, coming from because I start, this is my first year coaching, like head coaching at men's team. I've been a def- defensive coordinator, but mostly I work with young kids, like uh, development leagues and stuff like that. And the thing is, you have to present football. Not as a as a, just a sport, but the football to me, like what I've done, what I came by through football, football to me is a lifestyle. Like you can mm-hmm. practice basketball and not come to practices for two months, and you can still play a game because basically, if you're a shooting guard, you just need to right, need right, to right. But in football, there's 10 other people on offense or 10 other people on defense that depends on you knowing your job. And it's not just, oh, we're going to get scored on. Like, somebody can get injured because you're not doing your job. And uh, that's what I tried to do with the, with the youngsters. I try to let them know, like, you're, you're responsible for each other. This is a brotherhood. This is th- These aren't just your teammates. Like, even for me, I played in Germany for a year, and I still know a couple of guys from there that, you know, it's not just yep. teammates, you know, like, you click on a certain No, level, you're not. But- I think it's a really good point, the way you said, too, is because I'll give an example from the offense. I mean, if, if say, the offensive line is not in sync, if the offensive line is not communicating well, if I, as a quarterback, take my drop back, I expect somebody to get blocked, he's coming from my backside, he comes out of nowhere... You know what I mean? People can get can get injured, so that's a really good point. I mean, it really is more than just a, a sport. Same in the defense. You know, you have a defensive lineman that just opens the gap like he just goes away. You got a running back plus a fullback coming at you full speed with nobody, you know. Yeah. And uh, no, I, 
I'm sorry, interrupted you. No, it's a, it's a really good point. I mean, that's why football, I think that with guys that play football together for a few years, especially guys on the same side of the ball, they, they really get to know each other way better than, than other sports because there's that, there's that danger factor. There's that, you know, playing in games that they're so accountable on that other person that in other sports it's a great situation too, but it may not be as close, uh, you know, together, working together as they put that. Me personally, I think the most – the closest you can get to with American football is hockey or or army because it's basically a sport and it's a job that you you have to protect your guys you have to be there for your guys everybody's a team member you know it's not about if you're just a starter or whatever and that i think is a problem in europe as well like you have a lot of youngsters coming into playing football taking a couple of pictures for instagram facebook and they're not coming back to practice because, like, yeah. I just want to look tough. Yeah, you know? yeah. No, I mean, that's a, yeah, I mean, this is a problem that's, you know, but it's probably still going on. And, uh, well, in, in America, it's different, again, because America football is more sustainable because it's involved with you the schools. And, you, of, and, it's, yeah. and it's mandatory to go there. So it's, as a coach here, it's very difficult to say, okay, you have to come to practice. It's more of a please come to practice. It will be worth your while, but it's a, it's a strange situation, especially with guys, like you said, that are grown up and they're working or studying. Let me tell you this, like, for, just from my perspective, because you said well, please come to practice. With me, it's like this. You can be the most athletic guy. You can be the most talented guy football-wise on my team. If you're not a team player, I do not want you – playing for me because I, I want a team like I want everybody to pick everybody up I don't need you know like somebody's a superstar here yeah go be a superstar somewhere else you know right, we're right, a team right. so I and team so we and uh, for um, the juniors with all the stuff that's happening all over Europe with uh, all the recruitments going on with uh, European players coming to uh, universities and Division One even and stuff like that, you know. You, I can see a lot of young players be intrigued with this because a lot of European players want that American lifestyle, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's still, it's uh, it's more accessible now. And what I try to tell my youngsters is, look, this may open doors for you. You know, it's not that you're going to be a professional NFL QB or you're going to be an NFL lineman or a running back or even a kicker. You never know. Like one injury, you had, like you, you probably know from America, you had a couple of teammates that were NFL prone. Got one injury, you're done. Like you can't play yeah, football. Yeah. And I really try to give them that, that what football gave me. Like, football gave me a lot of life lessons, fourth and one, or something like that. Are you going to give up or are you going to fight for it? It's the same in, in life. Sometimes you get to a certain obstacle that you can either give up or you can lean on somebody like your teammate or, or I don't know, your parents in life situations. Yeah, sure. Let's let's do this. Let's do this together. Let's get through this. And yeah. I really, I, I cannot thank football as a sport and all the people that were uh, with me during all the football years that I played and coached. Uh, I'm really thankful for, for every single experience, everybody that was a part of it. Even with you, you know, we we just I got an email from you, and you see, like. I'm coming to Germany soon, soon, and we're yeah. we, we got to do something with this exchange, have some camps and stuff. And I think this is really important in Europe that we do not, as teams, as uh, as uh, organizations, we should not be. All right, let's be competitive. We're in the same league, you know. I gotta right. play you, but still, let's develop football. 
Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, we're going to be competitive. We're going to play against each other, but, you know, we still want to have the same goal of developing our younger guys and, and even our older guys into good football players and having a good product and having, and having fun with it, too. So, yeah, I mean, I'm all, I'm, all, I'm all for it. And that's really, like, my main point, what I want to do with this, with Division One Theory, is that I want to bring through these interviews, I want to bring information and really cool stories like yours with starting out with football, with someone, you know, coming from Slovenia where, you know, a lot of people watching this probably don't even know where Slovenia is. And a lot of people probably... Luka Doncic, everybody knows who that guy is. Or uh, Goran Dragic, everybody knows. Lajic <laughs> <laughs> Kopitar, all you Americans, you got to gotta fly over to Slovenia. Come, you got to see this. Slovenia is great. Slovenia, my, when I was with my wife, um, you know, when we met up with you, we were just north of Ljubljana in uh, Bochen. Uh, in the yeah. national park, which is it's so beautiful. I mean, if I can get a little cottage there and come play for your team at some point in my life, I'll be I'll be set. Hey, we'll talk. <laughs> I'll send you an offer sheet, man. I'll send you an offer sheet. So what? So uh, two more questions. Number one is, um, what is your, what are kind of your main? What's your main motivation, or what are your main motivations? You've kind of spoken about this already to develop the young people and have them get this mindset and life lessons. But as a, as a coach now, because you were a longtime player, what's kind of your main motivation that you want to push to the, to the guys that you're coaching? Uh, I want to give them everything that I couldn't have. Uh, okay. Just so uh, when I started playing, it was 2005. So football wasn't really developed anywhere except in maybe Germany Finland or Sweden and Austria was really getting big. Uh, and I know how much it's changed me having a coach that actually knows what he's doing. Like he actually played a position. Then having somebody, I'm not taking anything away. There's people who volunteer and stuff like that. But uh, you, me as a player, I'm looking at it like, you have to have knowledge about it because people take it in easier. Like that was the problem for me offensively this year because I played defense all my life, you know, like, but still my guys knew that I'm working hard at it, that I'm trying to give them everything, you know, and they, they stepped up because they knew I cared about well, their achievements. Cause at the end of the fact, it's not about, Oh, you're a, you, you as a coach, you won. No, my players won. I'm just trying to teach a system, you know. But uh, for me, for me, it's like really what well, what I said. Like I really want to give them the best opportunity to be coached, have great practices, uh, have people see them, have like how athletic they are. Maybe open some doors for them. Yeah, sure. College-wise, like, you can have Erasmus, all the exchange students and stuff. Like you can still go from Slovenia to Poland. And I don't want you to quit playing football for four years, you know. <laughs> like, find yeah, a yeah. team, be ready to play. And I, I really encourage all of that with my players. Uh, if anyone ever wanted to go somewhere, I really try to help them out with that. And that's why this year I prom I seen a couple of guys that are under 17 in my team that I really want to give them the best opportunity and introduce them, send tapes to people who can get them somewhere, and just be like, because I now that I'm that I that I had to quit playing because of an injury, you know, yeah. I understand what football meant to me all along, you know, like, it's hard not yeah. playing, but uh, when I played, I never saw that as a possibility, you know, you always think, oh, there's always next season, or, you know, my body's yeah. still good, or stuff like that. Yeah, like, you don't, you don't know what you got until it's, till it's gone, or until you can't really play. Yeah. And I really want them to give everything, get everything they can, in the short amount that you are able to play football because you cannot play football when you're 40 except if you're Tom Brady but we all know he's cheating on <laughs> I'm just kidding or my or my starting center or your starting center yeah but that's I just was, I, 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 I didn't know so his name's also Thomas so uh, 
Shout out Other to them. those guys. <laughs> hey, I got, yeah. I got Strolas. He was my captain this year. He's 31. And I give a hats off. Like, he goes to work eight to nine hours a day. Gym four to five times a week. Every practice, even if he's hurt, he yeah. comes and stands by the sideline because he's a leader. Yeah. And I really want, like, you cannot... You cannot instill that type of sportsmanship and uh, team spirit into someone that's already grown up. That's why I really think it's yeah. great to start with youngsters, yeah, start with of contact, and just give them the basics of football is this and this and this and this. Yeah. Life is this and this and this and this. It's not just football, no. you know? Yeah. No, I think that's a great outlook. I mean, that you really want to play or you want to coach selflessly. That means that you want to be the one that's giving the, these people opportunities and saying, hey, what do you want to accomplish with football and how can I help you? And I think there's nothing really better than yeah, – there's nothing better than, than doing that as a, as a coach, I think. So the last question I got for you is if you have a – have you got one? Favorite, favorite football quote? Yes, sir. If tomorrow you – before you, uh, before you say it, because when we were speaking about um, when you had said, you know, I don't care how athletic you are. If you're not a team player, I'm not going to play you. made me think of when I, was in, uh, when I was in high school, Portland, Maine, head coach Mike Bailey, if you're watching this, shout out, awesome coach. He had this up on the wall, and the quote was, try not to ruin this, um, I don't want to play with my 11 best. I want to play with my best 11. And it's not that I want to play with my best 11 individuals. You know, I want to play with my best, my best group of 11 together. And it's really true with football. It's a really great sport, and that's why you can really see that. Okay, my quote is over. You're out. Uh, me personally, my quote basically, I, uh, and it really I stand by it, especially as a player. And it, when I played and as a coach right now, I try to abot, like follow that quote. It's a Ray Lewis quote. It's uh, it goes like, "What would you give for tomorrow? Uh, what would you give for today if tomorrow wasn't promised?" And I think that's great for football and life. And you never know, so give it your all right now. And you know, like think about stuff later. I, don't do it dumb. I'm not trying to say that, but, you know, like, live for the moment. You never know what's coming, you know. You never know when it's, when you could, your football career stops yep. or, or something. And I really think if tomorrow wasn't promised, what would you get for today is my personal my Yeah, personal and not thing. only – it's really not only – that's not even really a football quote, but it, it's exactly it, – it works with football. It works with life, you know what I mean? It's like you got to live for the moment and not, not – try to look too far in, in advance because you never know when you're going to play your last play, you know? That's it. Yeah. All right. Well, I really appreciate you taking the time guys. Yuri, I hope that we get to see each other at some point in the near future. Hopefully I'll be coming to Slovenia at some point, maybe doing a, doing a little practice or camp with you guys. I told you, you got to keep that couch open for me and Nala. We coming, man. Yeah, definitely, we coming. definitely. Definitely, man. Got a place for you. All right. Take care, man. I'll talk to you soon. If I can just make a shout out to everybody watching from Europe. Yep. Invest in young guys. Invest in your youth, man. Like, let's, let's start something that's going to last for 15 years. Not just pick up pieces and go year by year. Let's make it yeah. like a long journey, you know. Yeah, I hear if you, I man. Invest in Invest in the youth. Invest in the youth. Get those feeder programs going. Get the flag football going. Start them young. Get that knowledge of football in their game. Teach them how to tackle with their head up and then create a sustainable situation for the future. And if anyone wants to or either needs help, wants to do whatever, hit me up. Me and my team are always ready to grow and to meet new people through sports. So, Chris, it was great. I right, appreciate you. it. Invite, man. Hope to see right, you, you soon. Stay in touch. Talk soon. All right, man. Take care. Later. Bye.